The Pope is going to hold a press conference on aliens and the supernatural. A man is arrested for releasing some bodily fluids on a customer in Whole Foods. And a 106-year-old man claims the world's oldest skydiving record. These are the weird stories for Thursday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian inside a closet. Here we go. We... The Pope is going to hold a press conference on aliens and the supernatural, which leads me to believe that the Pope finally took mushrooms. It's about time, Pope, that you took some mushrooms. (laughs) Really get on the phone with God. (laughs) This is a very strange press conference. How'd you like to be the guy scheduling the Pope's conferences and meetings? They're getting stranger and stranger. I think he had a press conference on gay people as well. Uh, (laughs) Pope, what next? Yeah, I don't know. Let's have a meeting about chemtrails. You know, I don't know. I took a sufficient dose of LSD yesterday, and I think I'm ready to tell everyone that they don't need us to talk to God. They can go inside. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pope, stop. Stop right there. We can't play that card just yet. Then we'll be powerless. The Vatican apparently has announced it's going to hold a press conference. This is true. It's going to occur tomorrow, Florida Friday, to discuss discuss the supernatural phenomena that's out there, including aliens, and how the church plans to handle potential encounters with aliens in the future. Ooh, I'm very curious to find, to hear what the church plans are to handle future encounters with aliens. I mean, my guess is they're going to get the jump on converting the space people. They'll probably allow the aliens to join the Catholic Church, to get baptized, receive sacraments, etc. You know, because the numbers are dwindling in the, you know, as far as churchgoers go, you kind of, you got to, you got to find new populations that you can convert. I think aliens are the perfect, the perfect uh, solution to that. Probably even allowed the aliens to join the priesthood, which would be shocking. That would mean they would allow aliens before women to join the priesthood. But I I wouldn't put it past them, to be honest with you. Now, it says here, according to a notice on the Vatican website, uh, this event will begin at noon and feature three prominent Vatican members. Uh, They include members of the Vatican's Doctrine of the Faith, the director of the International Observatory for Marian Apparitions, and mystical phenomena of the Pontifical International Marian Academy. They got someone handling apparitions and mystical phenomena. Well, they, I mean, you got to have someone in that department. They do, this is the individual that's probably in charge of all the exorcisms and whatnot. And um, this conference is being held to present the new provisions of the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith for discerning between apparitions and other supernatural phenomena. The Vatican has not held a similar event since February 1978. They waited a long time, despite more and more supernatural phenomena being reported over the past decade, I would say. More and more alien sightings, for sure. Abductions. All of that. Uh, The National Catholic Reporter notes that the decision to hold this press conference comes after a surge in reports of aliens and supernatural phenomena by the mainstream media. And uh, during the conference, the Vatican is expected to introduce some new guidelines on how it will address encounters with aliens and phenomena attributed to them. Until now, such reports have largely been dismissed by the Pope and the Vatican's investigative team. Last year, Pope Francis briefly mentioned aliens while discussing early Christians' interactions with Jews and Gentiles. (laughs) How did he get off on that tangent? How do you go from Christians' interaction with Jews and Gentiles Uh, into aliens. I didn't see the brief. For reasons not entirely clear, he compared these interactions to potential encounters with aliens. (laughs) And strangely, he he mentioned that interactions with Mexicans also had some parallels with interactions with space people. Very strange. Uh, Here's a quote from the Pope. If, for example, tomorrow an expedition of Martians came, and some of them came to us here, Martians, right? Green with that long nose and big ears, just like children paint them. And one says, but I want to be baptized. What would happen? (laughs) The Pope wondered at that time. (laughs) I love how the Pope described Martians with the, 
being green with big ears. This is like that was like the definition of Martians in the '60s and '70s. I think we've gone beyond the <laughs> little green men now. But it's okay. The Pope is trying. The Pope is trying. Uh, the Pope is concerned when, uh, when the aliens come here. There's, they might want to choose one of our Earth religions. I doubt it, but maybe they do. Then we have a few on the menu. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine the aliens choosing some sort of Earth-centric religion. But more than likely, will be converted to their intergalactic religion, whatever that is, when they, when they show it to us. Because... Uh, we won't be able to resist that. Whatever it is, it's going to be huge, and they'll probably convert us <laughs> very easily, I'd imagine. Uh, aliens themselves will probably be our new gods if they ever arrive. For some, they already are our gods. And if you've ever gone to a UFO convention, you can see it is uh, the UFO phenomenon is, is one big ideology, and it's, it's mostly crazy people. I have to say, I'm fairly interested in hearing what the Pope has to say about this supernatural phenomenon. Not just the aliens, but what about the other stuff, like Slender Man? What does the Pope think of the Loch Ness Monster? And Bigfoots, right? I mean, do they have a plan to convert all the Bigfoots? I'd imagine they have to come up with something here. I'd love to see a Bigfoot with a collar on, yeah, leading a sermon. Just a sermon of like... <laughs> A man was arrested for releasing bodily fluids on a Whole Foods shopper. Please say he sneezed on her shoes. Please say he just sneezed on her shoes. Please just sneeze on her shoes. A man pleasures himself. Nah, leaves bodily fluids on a shopper. Man, I was hoping it was a sneeze on the shoes, but no. It involves a man pleasuring himself. Not the kind of bodily fluids you want on yourself while you're shopping at at Whole Foods, you don't expect it. You maybe you expect that while you're shopping at a Walmart or a uh, a Waffle House. Maybe you're having. <laughs> you don't expect it in a in a yeah, Whole Foods. Well, that means if it's in Whole Foods, you know it's going to be a hundred percent organic at least. All right, it's a, that's a bad joke. Forgive me. We have here the p police say a man performed a sexual act on himself in the middle of a Whole Foods store and left his bodily fluids. On a woman that was shopping. This took place in Georgia, Shambly, Georgia. Shambly police have made this arrest. This is a disturbing case. A woman was shopping at the store. She told the police a stranger um, ejected bodily fluids onto her. Here's her quote here. I'm afraid to read it. Uh, I, I don't know if I need any more details or even if I want more details. You know, this is, this is horrible. This is one of those moments where you're like, what a day to be literate. Uh, I wish I wasn't. Uh, here's the quote. I see this gentleman walking down the aisle who's pretending to be shopping. He's holding a basket. He looked kind of like a normal gentleman, like maybe late 20s, early 30s. Nothing like extra suspicious about him. I bend over to grab the chips. And as I was doing that, I felt something wet and warm on my backside. And so I, yeah, I put my hands on my back. And then so what, 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 what could it possibly be? Was it something that dripped from the ceiling? Like, you know, sometimes you get hit with a mystery drip from above and you're like, oh, my God, I hope this is just rainwater and not, you know, liquid cancer that just fell on me. Then, you know, then I, I look at my hand and I see, oh my goodness, I see a, 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 a light colored substance, you, you know, and then, I, I, you know, not what you want to find on your backside while you're shopping. I had just found these amazing tomatoes too. They, they looked amazing. Um, I turn around, I see this guy looking at me he, and then he zips his pants up. Uh, now, uh, there's some surveillance footage that showed the woman chasing the man out of the store. She was trying to draw as much attention as possible to the suspect and the situation so that there would be plenty of witnesses, which um, you have to commend her for. I mean, how many people at that point just wouldn't crumble under the situation, but she, she had the wherewithal to make us think about it and chase him out of the store so people can see him, they can check the surveillance footage, and a man named Troy, age 28, a disgusting individual, has been taken into custody. He'll be charged with sexual battery, public indecency. What, what should happen is uh, the woman that was the victim should be allowed to smash him in the junk with the produce of her choice. I would recommend the largest pineapple in the store. And this is a lesson, guys. This is exactly why when you go grocery shopping, you make a grocery list 
And you don't shop on an empty stomach. You want to get in and out as quickly as possible. In and out, in and out. Avoid bodily fluids. Yay! A Texas man reclaims the world's oldest skydiving record at 106 years old. After retaking at age 106 the Guinness World Records mark for oldest person to tandem skydive out of an airplane, Alfred Blaschke hailed his feat as living evidence that, quote, everyone is more capable than they think. This is an uplifting story that even if you're over 100, you can still set some Guinness World Records. Here's a Another quote from the Georgetown, Texas resident. If you think you can't, you're just underestimating yourself. You just need to make the decision to try. Now, Blaschke's motivational comments came in a write-up published by the media, uh, specifically the Guinness World Record website, whose organization is known for maintaining a database of more than 40,000 world records. Now, it, it says here, this particular record, which Blaschke now has captured twice, made international news because of an entirely different person altogether this past fall. In October, 104-year-old Dorothy Hoffner of Chicago made a tandem skydive aimed at landing her the world's record for essentially being the oldest person ever to jump from a plane. That was at 104. However, eight days later, while awaiting Guinness's official certification for her achievement, unfortunately, Dorothy Hoffner died in her sleep at her living community. Blaschke then soared to the skies on a plane the morning of November 27th uh, after reaching an altitude of 9,000 feet over Fentress, Texas. Blaschke attached himself to a skydiving instructor and jumped out of the plane into a free fall with him. The pair safely parachuted the final 5,500 feet to the ground while his children, grandchildren, journalists, and even government officials cheered on below. So uh, that's a strange aspect of the story is that it, the record was held briefly, nah, not officially, but uh, you know, a woman who was 104 took the jump, unfortunately dies a week later. I mean, at some point we're just chucking old people out of planes here. I mean, what, what are we doing? This is a little strange to me. <laughs> and what, 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 I mean, we, I'm hoping this guy Blaschke lasts, but I mean, he, he's 106. How much further is he getting? Any 107 year olds out there just want to... And it says here, this is the third occasion that Blaschke has gone tandem skydiving. His second time was in 2020 when he was 103 years and 181 days old. He jumped out of a plane at 14,000 feet to celebrate his twin grandson's graduation from college. Yeah, yeah. Way to, way to steal the limelight from your twin grandson's graduation. This is a big day for them. You know, they toiled for years. In school, they're finally going to graduate, and Grandpa's got to outshine him by jumping out of a plane at 103 years old. Pfft, this guy, this guy. Can't you take a back seat, Blaschke? Couldn't even let this lady have the record. <laughs> Blaschke says, this has been my dream. He said that after the 2020 jump, which was three years after he celebrated his 100th birthday with his debut skydive, according to Guinness. Blaschke says, quote, I never thought I'd be around this long. It's pretty cool. Now, at that time, he had the record, but uh, Sweden's Ruth Linnea Ingard Larsson, Ruth Linnea Ingard Larsson, did I say her name right? Ruth Linnea Ingard Larsson. <laughs> she surpassed Blaschke's mark by a relatively slim margin in 2022 at 103 years and 259 days old. It was her exploits that inspired Blaschke to think about recapturing his mark. Well, it's just, yeah, it's just these old people just outdoing each other with these skydiving tactics. This, this deserves a documentary, what's going on here. Is it, was any, I wasn't aware of this little contest going on with 100 plus year olds just beating each other's skydiving records here. This is wild. And if you're like a really old person, like you're, you're hovering around 105, 106 here, I mean, why not get involved? Because even if you, you don't live through the dive, it's kind of a badass way to go out, right? It, and, and you could still be the record holder of oldest person to die skydiving as well. So either way, you're looking at a possible record for yourself. You know, when you stop and think about it, pretty much any semi-sophisticated physical activity over a hundred could put you in the record book, right? I mean, 
people over 100 don't do much but sit in a chair. So anything outside of that, you, you could be breaking a record. You know? Maybe you're 105 and you can do a kickflip on a skateboard or a cannonball into a pool. There's got to be a, a, a record for oldest person to bungee jump, I'd imagine, or finish an entire calzone. <laughs> I'm just throwing out ideas. Man, I, I'm impressed if uh, someone over 100 years old can, can at karaoke, completely finish Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean, this, that should be a record, right? Hello, my friends and loyal listeners of the Weird AF News podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, just... A heads up, tomorrow's a Friday, so we'll be doing the Florida Friday episode. If you happen to come across any strange, weird, hilarious Florida news, please send them my way. Send me links. It's uh, funnyjones at gmail.com, or you can slide into my DMs on Instagram, at funnyjones, or at weirdafnews. Um, I wanted to uh, give a shout-out and, and a thanks to some people who, who wrote me some nice comments on the the podcast on spotify you can uh, you can write comments on individual episodes someone named tammy about a day ago wrote i love your podcast it makes for a great morning plus i learn something new every day and i end up laughing while i'm learning i love you man glad you're feeling better isn't that sweet so shout out to tammy very nice little comment there uh i don't get very many on spotify but the, the, here's here's another couple good ones here uh, this was published two days ago. Patricia Sisson wrote, Absolutely hilarious. So funny, silly, witty, unpredictable, and creative. Humor is so good for us. Thank you for always making me laugh, especially when I really need it. You're very welcome, Patricia, and thank you for writing that amazing comment on, uh, on Spotify. I appreciate that. Uh, someone named Char wrote, The cheese story comments and puns were epic, Jonesy. I was impressed with those. Well done, Jonesy. Also, yak cheese is commonly given as a tasty chew for dogs. Thanks again for another fun podcast. Well, thank you, Char, for and, and a really sweet message. It was, it, was really, it was really nice. I don't get a lot of these comments. Here's another one on a Florida Man episode. Let's see here. This is from... Uh, Oh, Rising Horus wrote a comment, a spaghetti incident? Uh, I don't remember that what that was referring to. Someone attacked somebody with pasta, I believe, on that, on that episode. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, Patricia wrote me another comment on another episode, pure comedy. Very cool. And Tammy, another one, she wrote, I absolutely love your show. The weird stories are so funny considering the world is ridiculous and upside down. You make the world look different, Jonesy, and funny instead of ugly and disappointing. So these are some nice comments from some uh, loyal listeners on Spotify. I, I, um, I don't get a lot of those comments, so that was really sweet. You can uh, also rate the podcast on Spotify by giving it five stars, which is really, really helpful. So please do that if you happen to be listening on Spotify. I really appreciate that. I'm getting more and more listeners on Spotify because the Google podcast went away, sadly. Um, anyways, whatever you happen to be listening to Weird AF News on, if you're able to give me a rating, uh, give me some stars or just a thumbs up, I'd, I'd appreciate that so much. It really helps out. It really does. And if you have the time to write a review um, and I and I see it, I'll read it. So, and sometimes I, I miss them though. So if you could just, you can email me and let me know you wrote me a, a review and I'll give you a nice shout out on the show. Uh, as always, there's a phone number you can call as well if you'd like to leave a voicemail, 646-450-2012. I'll publish a phone call after this, maybe two. Um, and then uh, I guess I'll see you tomorrow for Florida Friday. I, I guess I should mention if you want to support the show, as always, go to weirdafnews.com where you can buy me a coffee or join the Patreon. I appreciate your time, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow for Florida Friday. Thanks again, guys. Hi, Jonesy. My name is Danielle, and I'm giving my son permission to uh, tell you how much he likes your show. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Kieran. Uh, I've been with your show for a few months now. Uh, Florida Friday episodes are my best. I live in Minnesota. Uh, it's, I listen to it every day, uh, before and after school to make sure I didn't miss anything. I started from a recommendation, um, on Spotify and I thought this is what it's recommending me, but I started on Florida Friday, so I had the weirdest episode and 
It's just you you make me laugh, Zumzi, when I'm having some when I'm ha- when I'm down you you make me laugh and I'm thankful for that. Thank you. Um, Zumzi, um they um you know the sandwiches at Dunkin' Donuts I think they're just trying to make healthier versions of McDonald's sandwiches without admitting it. But the donuts, um, I don't know if this is true where you are, but they have old-fashioned plain donuts, regular glazed donuts, blueberry glazed donuts, chocolate glazed donuts, regular chocolate donuts. Um Boston cream donuts, jelly donuts, and even a watermelon burst donut, which is, I don't know what that consists of, but I don't want to know. Um, but yeah, and they even have those donut holes. Um, so I, I don't know what you're talking about unless things are different where you are. Good luck with your life, man.